When Europeans first sailed around the world to settle here, they found it harsh and unfamiliar. So they'd feel more at home, they brought the fruits and the vegetables and the animals they'd known in the old world. One plant had served a practical purpose in Europe for 4,000 years, the grapevine. And so well have grapes flourished in Australia that it seems they have a natural home here. Such was the enthusiasm for winemaking in early Australia that James Busby could write in 1830, the man who could sit under the shade of his own vine with his wife and children about him and the ripe clusters hanging within their reach in such a climate as this and not feel the highest enjoyment is incapable of happiness and does not know what the word means. The wineries of Australia are young by European standards, but after nearly 200 years and nearly 200 vintages, they're firmly established from one end of the continent to the other. For many winemakers, it's a family tradition going back six and seven generations, back to the days before machines. One of the early settlements was in the Hunter Valley, in New South Wales, and winemaker Murray Tyrrell can still ride his horse past the work his grandfather did more than a hundred years ago. The vineyard that you see coming up from the main road up to the winery was planted in 1879, and uh, they had to do a lot, tremendous lot of hard work to clear, clear all that country, uh, uh, and uh, you know it didn't come very easily. Uh, they planted initially about four acres of land, and I think that took six years together with building that slab hut that everyone sees when they come up to the place. When we were, when the age of seven, as far as I can remember back, and uh, we then at vintage time used to shovel the grapes up, hop in the vat, we were put in the vat to shovel the grapes up the same as we're doing it now. Like the Tyrrells, many of the names still associated with winemaking were pioneers in establishing the industry. Names like Lindemann and Penfold, McWilliam and Seppelt, Gramp, Hardy, Hamilton and many, many more. It's been a skill handed down from one generation to the next. At the same time, fresh talent and ideas are making themselves felt. But you need to have a feeling for winemaking too. Traditional methods still hold good, but slowly and carefully machines are introduced, like mechanical grape pickers that can work at night when the grapes are cool. Many winemakers believe in intensive technology to maintain control under the sorts of climatic conditions they work in. In most of our major grape growing areas, there are long, hot summers with huge amounts of sunlight. of grapes grown in Australia come from Europe, and yet the seasons are turned around. Grapes grow and are harvested in the first five months of the year, the opposite of the Northern Hemisphere.
Australians have got a vigorous enthusiasm for new technology. And along with our wine, we've exported that technology to many countries. And yet it's said that wine makes itself just as it always has done. The bigger winemakers have found new ways to make good wine in large quantities. But in many places it hasn't changed very much. Our grandparents would recognize someone like Jennifer Meek, working in her vineyard near Mudgee in New South Wales. Well, I'm in a very small way as a winemaker. Uh, I choose to do it that way because I feel I have more control over what I'm doing. I think it's a creative thing. Uh, people can be creative in lots of ways. I can't paint. Once you're a winemaker, or if you want to do that, then it's, it's because you love the product. Uh, you're putting yourself into the product. You're not just doing a job. It becomes very much a part of you, very much a personal thing. You're watching it grow. You're watching it change. Sometimes you don't like what it's doing, and you get annoyed with it, but uh, basically, you love it, and so you take care of it. I think winemaking in Australia is very much a growing industry. And as long as we can maintain the individuality of the wines and not try to produce a mass product that tastes the same, and I don't think we're doing that. Even the biggest companies have got their winemakers who are doing individual things with each product. Winemaking has been going on in South Australia for 140 years. Samuel Smith was one of the pioneers who established a family in the Barossa Valley. Well, Michael's the eldest of the sixth generation to be working at Yolumba. Uh, he's done his course at Roseworthy, which is the Enology University here in South Australia. He's uh, in charge of PR, but he's also actively tied up in winemaking. He's recently been appointed an associate judge at one of the major royal wine shows, which is, shows that he at least has got a, a good developing palate. John Gay said long ago, from wine, what sudden friendship springs. Cheers the sad, revives the old, inspires the young, makes weariness forget his toil and fear her danger. Opens a new world when this, the present, fails. And Benjamin Franklin. Wine is a constant proof that God loves us and likes to see us happy. Time has let winemaking in Australia develop its own style and character. And while some things get older and improve with age, there are fresh beginnings. New vineyards and new wineries have sprung up alongside the old as well as in new and untried areas. The enjoyment of wine has become very much a part of the way of life in Australia. There are some 300 winemakers competing with each other to produce almost every wine style you can name. And they're competing on the world market. 
well-known wine lover and international wine judge, Len Evans. Well, I think we're a very nationalistic people, as you know, and a lot of people think they make the, it's a cliche, they say, oh, we make the best wines in the world. It's just that the rest of the world haven't caught up. They don't understand. The very best wines in the world are made, I still think, in the great areas of France and Germany. They're certainly amongst the most expensive in the world, too. I think the critic who recently sort of um, said we're in the top most important seven nations, although there are countries far bigger than ours, with a public far bigger than ours, was nearer the truth. Dylan Thomas said, didn't he, that he was a first-rate poet of the second rank. If you reserve the first rank for Shakespeare and Milton, I think that's really what we're sort of doing with Australia. We make some very fine wine. Uh, obviously, with the distances between the different areas. We have all sorts of different microclimates, different soils. We've got the best grapes. We've got some of the best winemakers. We have the best techniques because we go around the world shopping for them. And we have tremendous enthusiasm and drive. And I think this is another very important thing. So therefore, I think we're making some damn fine wine. Uh, visitors who come here are really astonished by the almost bewildering range of stuff we have available. And they're certainly astonished by the prices. And um, I think that we really are almost the last great undiscovered continent. And I'm just delighted that people are learning this more and more.